Hi there, welcome back to my channel. So today I will be showing you how to use the autofocus component that I created, I guess, about two years ago. And I noticed that I never created a video for that to show how easy it is to use and how, how great things look with that component. So I will show you guys how I created that and basically how to use it. Uh, so what we have here, it is a pretty simple project. And by the way, you can clone this like on my code sandbox. It is just like a pretty simple uh, project. It is actually based on the R3F template, which is default on code sandbox. And what I like about code sandbox, it is easier to manage all of the dependencies and you can do everything on the browser. So I really enjoy the experience. Uh, and it, this is not sponsored at like at, at any point. Uh, I just use because I really like it. And what we have here, it is just a simple project with the React Tree Fiber and Dry and the React Scripts and then 3GS latest version. And we have one index.js, which is basically creating a root element. Then we have a styles, which is again, pretty, pretty simple, minimal that we need for creating a project. And then everything happens in this scene.js, which is the React tree fiber stuff. And all that you have to do is have a canvas and then I have a background color, a box and the orbit controls. And then you have it like this way, which is pretty basic, pretty simple. So let's change some of the things. Uh, I will be using this these, uh, uh, model from Sketchfab and the creator is Jasper and the model looks great. And I want to use out of focus here to show what the difference it can make into a, into a model like this really complex with a lot of things, a lot of the things in the foreground and also in the background. So let's take a look to see what happens. So let's start by using GLTF from the Roy Menders guys. And then I will be dropping the model that I already have here. And as you can see, it is pretty simple. So I will copy everything as the result, and then I will create a new file called model.jsx model. And then let's paste everything. I will export default this model, and I guess I need to upload the model here. Uh, so yeah. Let's wait for this to finish the upload. And yeah, we already have it. And then in the scene.js, I will replace the box with the model that I just created. And probably I need to wrap this model into a suspense because it's loaded after 3G, like React starts loading things. So I need to wrap everything into a suspense and yeah we probably have it but we can't see anything because everything is black the background is black and the model is black so let me bring the color and i have it eat here for the background and let's change it here and yeah we already have the model but everything is black and uh, the way i like to correct this is to using is by using environment component from dry and then I will use the preset done in this case you have a bunch of them that you can set like all of those options but in this case I will be using this one and as you can see we already have it and it looks great without any lights so better for performance and in this case it's looking almost exactly like Sketchfab render and then now let's use the autofocus the one thing that I want to show you guys so the way we can install it like using code 
code sandbox, we just type it here in the dependencies. So I will search for React post processing. If I type it correctly, React post processing yet. And then we also need the post processing. Because some of the things inside React post processing relies on the post processing, so we need both. And not always, but in our case here, we need both. And then to use the, the out of focus, all that you have to do inside your Canvas component, I will be using Effect Composer. And I will wrap everything with the Effect Composer. And now I will just drop the out of focus. And that's it. And then we can save. We can probably do a refresh. And we already have it, but we barely can notice the difference because we need to set some parameters so we can notice the difference. And the first one will be the bulkhead scale. And I will set this to a very like high number, like 16. And yeah, you can see by setting the bulkhead scale, everything works as expected. And of course you can change that number. Uh, one, one property that is important is the near and far for the camera because this can impact. So for example, if this is set to 1000 or like higher, the effect will not be that pronounced because the way the autofocus measures the, the distance is relying on the camera near and far. So because this model is not that big, what I did, I just changed it to be like 200. And then like anything you change on the canvas parameters, we like requires a, a restart. So we need to refresh the auto, like the auto reload, the fast reload doesn't work. So you need to manually refresh. And as you can see here now, you have the autofocus in action. So what focus, like the focus is center of the screen. So everything that is centered, like in, in, in the canvas will be the focus. So if I focus there, you can see like the difference. And I love this camera kind of focus animation. It's pretty great to look at. And you can change that. You have some parameters here. So if you set this to be the mouse instead, now, where I point my cursor will be the focus, see? So I'm not moving the camera at all. Anything that I point with my cursor will be the focal point. And depending on the, like, on the project that you are trying to achieve, this can be also interesting, like making the, the mouse being the, the, the focus instead of the camera. And it works great both ways. And you also have parameters to control like the speed of the, uh, the autofocus and etc. You can check all of the parameters. So if you go to React post-processing documentation, and then you just search for effects. The first one will be the autofocus. I implemented this with the, the Antoine uh a while ago uh and here you can see like some of the parameters that you can use like the target the mouse the debug manual or the smooth time which is the time that it takes to focus uh the debug stuff it is also great to show you and it is pretty simple so you can understand what is happening so you set this debug to be true and now you can see like this green ball where the camera is actually focusing when we have the mouse. And if we remove the mouse property here and we set this to be the camera, you can see the autofocus in action, see? So if you focus all the way there, the green dot goes in that area and it is always centered in the screen and that's how the distance is being measured and then it changes in real time. 
Uh, and yeah, and anything else, it's coming from the depth of field. So autofocus is basically creating an auto focus for the focus distance parameter. So we are reading the data from the depth of the camera. Uh, and with that number, we can set this, this parameter automatically. But anything else, it is driven by the depth of field. So it is a component wrapper for another component which is great. Uh, let me turn off the debug mode. We don't need this anymore. And yeah, you can set, like if it, this is too strong and you set, for example, to six, you have a depth of field, but not that stronger. And of course you can crank it up really high to have like a really shallow depth of field, but it looks great. Like I love this effect. And this one is not relying on the on, on my implementation, which were you impl like it was implemented using the Raycaster. This one that Antoine implemented is using the depth of the, of the scene, which is great on performance. And yeah, this was a pretty quick tutorial. Uh, I'll be probably expanding this a little bit further, adding some more effects and Let's see, for example, clicking on elements and then we can like go into the element, seeing it closer. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you are interested in this kind of content. And yeah, that's all for this tutorial. Uh, thank you very much. See you and bye bye.